Hey, welcome to uh, Introducing Multiplicative Thinking. Wow, what does that mean? Sounds complicated. But it isn't, you know. Let's come down to this little statement here in green. Have you thought about what multiplication really means? That's the journey we're going to start today. And uh, it's important later on in your problem solving when you are working with big numbers. Okay, so let's, let's start the journey and have a look. Okay, is this your, what's this? W-O-T way of thinking about multiplication. I think for many of us, that's the way it started. Four threes are 12. Oh, right. Is that true? Four times three is 12. Yeah, and teachers said, yep, and they were right. You should know your tables up to 12 twelves. That can be very useful. Do you remember that stuff? One, three is three. Two, threes are six. Three, threes are nine. Four, threes are 12. Five, threes are 15. And all that stuff. Okay, what were we doing? Well, we're talking about more and more lots of three. And uh, up to, what am I up to here now? Six, threes are 18. So that's six lots of three. Or multiplying three by bigger than bigger whole numbers. So some of you might have heard that these are multiples of three because you have multiplied it by the next whole number. Okay, so this is uh, one way of thinking about multiplication, all your times tables. But uh, we want to get into it and say, what's it useful for? Are there different ways of thinking? So let's have a look now. And uh, I want you to look around the screen. And uh, in a minute, we'll pause. I want you to pause the presentation and uh, look at whether these five entries on the screen are the same, are they similar? How are they the same or how are they different? How are they similar? Yeah. Okay, so uh, look at the color coding. That might be a clue. So pause it now and have a go. Right, let's come back now and have a look up the top left-hand corner here. What have we got? We've got one row of three, another row of three. That's two rows of three. Let's look around the screen. Oh, there's a green one down here. I shouldn't have told you that. It made it too easy. And it says two lots of three as well. So I guess those two go together. Okay, can you see that? That little way of thinking uh, with a diagram. So here, what about up the top right hand corner here? We've got one row of two, two rows of two, three rows of two. So where else on the screen do you see that? We'll come down the bottom left hand corner here. There's purple as well. So here, three lots of two. Okay, so those match up. And then, of course, the dude in the middle is the answer. There are six squares when you put them all in a row. Hmm, can we look at that in a bit more detail? Let's have a look now. I've lined everything up. So here we have two rows of three. Two lots of three is six. And our way of thinking is that that's two. There's one lot of three and there's another lot of three. You can partition six into two threes if you like. Hmm, that's interesting. And what about up here? Over on the top right, we've got one lot of two, two lots of two, three lots of two. And yes, three times two is six. Same answer. But what's the way of thinking? We've got one lot of two, two lots of two, three lots of two. So what have we actually done here? We have looked at the number six in different ways. Okay. And we've said... They are the same. Is there another way, or other ways, in fact, you talk to your classmates and your teacher about this, about uh, looking at number six? Okay, well, let's have a look. It looks like these two represent the same number. How can that be so? And is it always so? If you change the order of the timesing around, it appears that it always gives you the same answer. Well, hmm, you might think about that. And how would you show it? Well, I'd like you to think about this little dude as lying down. I'd like you to rotate that figure and stand that little dude up. And if you stood that little dude up, okay, what would it look like? Oh, yes. Can you see that? You might try that on a piece of paper. Oh, now you can see more clearly that they are equal. 
That's not a bad way of thinking about it. So, what was my question? Does it matter whether you have 2 times 3 or 3 times 2? It'll give the same answer, won't it? It doesn't matter. But what about something like, what, 3 times 4? Could you, could you show with a diagram that that must be equal to 4 times 3? What about doing that as a little activity? Now do it with your classmates and check with your teacher and use the ideas that I've put up here now because this is an important rule in multiplication, whether it matters in which order you do the multiplication. It's called later on in maths the commutative rule. The commutative rule. Is multiplication commutative? That is, it doesn't matter which way around you do it. Could you prove that? Even at this early stage, I think you can, using the diagram approach up there. So I'd like you to play with that. That's very, very important, coming out of our way of thinking about multiplication. All right, let's keep going now. So what is another way of thinking about multiplication? Maybe another way would be to think of this word, multiplication, as multiple many additions. So instead of adding stuff up a lot, we can use multiplication, multiple addition. And it's a good way. It works very well in the real number set, which is what we're dealing with now. And it's very handy for later on. So when we are trying to add up the number of items here, one, two, three, four, five, six, no, we won't do that. That's too hard, particularly if you get into big numbers. So we're going to say it's one, two, three, four, four lots of three over there is 12. So we're going to use multiple addition, not addition itself, multiplication. How many lots of something we've got, we are not going to do counting and do the additive sort of process, adding them all up. We can do better than that if we understand multiplication. And that's what this little video is about. Okay, so do you get the idea here? Multiple addition. When you have find yourself trying to add up or count up a lot of things, maybe you should think, ah, oh, multiplicative thinking. Instead of doing many additions, I will use multiplication. Lots of. How many lots of these have I got? So maybe I should put that word there. I think that's pretty important. The idea of thinking about multiplication, multiples of numbers, as how many lots of them have I got? So you're looking for a pattern and you're saying, how many lots of them have I got? Okay, are you getting excited? Can you see that it's a different way of thinking? I want you to try and open up your, your brain there and, and make it work in slightly different ways. It's always hard to uh, you know think differently, but gee, you get good in the long run. Let's have a look now. So what is the importance of this? Well, maybe a carpet, you want to buy carpet or tiles for a floor and you want to know how many you have to get and they say, how many square meters have you got? So you might measure your floor area and find up here there's two meters by six meters. Okay, and each of these squares there four have been divided into meter by meters. So how many square meters each of these boxes have you got? You've got two lots of six. So you've got 12 boxes or square meters. Oh, so you've been able to answer this question down here, find the number of square meters, uh, or find the area, the number of square meters of plain figure covers, by working it out yourself without waiting for a formula from your teacher, actually understanding how to do that problem. Okay, so we've got the answer of 12 square meters. And uh, that's the coverage of the figure. And we didn't need the teacher's formula. Okay, and when the teacher gives us the formula, we'll understand it perfectly because you can see how multiplication works. Let's go on and see some other uses. So what about using our idea of multiplication to do harder problems like 39 times 4? If we do it in the picture way, if you like, we'd have 39 lots of 4. So we'd draw the big rectangle. And then, because that's not easy, how do you do that? That's too hard. 
Let's break 39 into 30 lots of 4 and plus 9 lots of 4. So we'll partition or split the number 39, which is the, the problem one, into two parts. So it's 30 lots of 4 is 120. That covers the red part here. And then it's 9 lots of 4. 36 covers the green part there. So the answer to our problem is going to be 30 lots of 4 plus 9 lots of 4. And these are easier to work with. 30, 4 lots of 30, 120, because 4 threes are 12, and put the 0 on afterwards. So you could partition that even more. This is 4 times, um, what, 4 times 3 is 12 times 10 times by 10, put the zero on at the end, so you could partition that. And nine fours, that's in your basic 12 times table sort of range. So nine fours, 36. So you do need your times tables still. Okay, so 156 is the answer. Is there another way of doing it? Okay, um, well, let's do it with our diagram. 39 lots of four is 40 lots of four, take one lot of four. Okay, so that's 160, take four is 156. Oh, have I got you thinking now? Are there other ways of breaking these numbers down so that you can do them, uh, work, work with the multiplication within your head? Okay, so the exercise here now with a partner and with your teacher helping is can you make up some problems for each other to so see if you can work them out by breaking the numbers down. And you might go into two two-digit numbers, something like 22 by 15. Do some of those. Have a bit of competition. Do them on the board. Show everybody how smart you are, because you're all smart. You've just got to think a bit about what you're doing there and how it all works. Okay, let's go on. Here's some interesting problems, and some of these come from the Education um, Multiplicative Thinking Project. So you might look online and uh, play some of the games on there. Here's an exercise where we're looking at supermarkets where they stack cans in various ways. And just watch yourself, don't take the bottom can, okay? Because the whole thing might fall over. I don't know whether it would there, would it, in that position? Have a look at that. Anyway, the idea is that the footprint, in other words, the print left on the ground, if you took them away, would be like taking a foot out of the sand, what sort of shape is left. This is five cans by five cans, and this is three cans high. So let's get that from this little part here. Do we agree that there would be 25 cans on the bottom row? Check that. Do we agree with her? And she could stack 50 cans using the pyramid method. 50 using that, and uh, 60 using this method, and 75. So the first thing I want you to do now, maybe pause the presentation and check that you agree that the total number of cans are 50, 60, and 75 under those two different methods. Okay, now, then this is the big issue where you don't have a diagram. If you change the base from 5 by 5 and made it 5 by 9, how would it all change in each case? Okay, and the little question to, to you is, does it matter whether this is the 9 going back there or whether this is the 9? I think we've already covered that. Anyway, so go through and check your numbers with a footprint of 5 rows by 9. Okay. All right, and then you could try 5 by 10 or 12 or 14 or whatever, and that's where this last little exercise comes in. Can you see a way of working out how many cans you can stack with different footprints without going through and, and working out each one? Is there a pattern or a rule that this can stacking would follow? So that if I came to you and said, look, I want a 5 by 12, you would say this is the number of cans that, that you uh, require. Okay. And you could see a pattern or a rule. Okay. 
that's getting fairly challenging. So work with your teacher and uh, other students with this one. And let's have a look at another interesting problem. Okay, we're down to Max's matchsticks. And again, this comes from the project. Four students were asked to work out how many matchsticks were needed to make 10 squares without, without counting. Remember, we're not going to do additive thinking anymore. We're going to try to use multiplication instead of adding multiple addition. When you're adding, adding up multiple times, then you say, oh no, I could use multiple addition, which is, I could use multiplication. So four people, four students, have come up with this, these answers. Now, they're all giving the answer 31, which is correct. But how did they work it out? Can you work out how they did it and were their methods correct? Okay, and then your next job is to find how many matchsticks would be needed to make five cells, 12 cells and 17 cells. And uh, here, what strategies um, would you choose? So I want you to check the strategies that they've used, work out, in other words, how each person got this. Okay, and then see if you can use one of those sort of approaches to answer the other questions where you have 5, 12 or 27. Is there a pattern or a rule that you could use for this? All right, well, I hope you found that a bit of a headache as you learn to think differently. It does give you a bit of a headache, but I want you to go back over and see if uh, you can understand that because this is very, very important for your later work in maths um, in problem solving. And uh, I wish you well on the multiplicative journey. Catch you in the next presentation. Cheers for now.